Imhotep was like the Einstein of ancient Egypt. He was a genius who practiced medicine, astrology, and mathematics, and he's also responsible for designing the very first Egyptian pyramid. He was so influential in his time that he was later raised to the status of a god and had his very own cult. Let's dive into the wild and mysterious life of the first pyramid builder. Not much is known about Imhotep's early life. We know that he lived during Egypt's third dynasty over 4,000 years ago, but no one knows where he came from. While he would later become famous for designing the first pyramid, Imhotep was also an incredibly important figure in the world of medicine. When talking about ancient medicine, most people bring up Hippocrates, aka the father of modern medicine. But Imhotep was well ahead of the curve when it came to technical medical writing. Many scholars credit him as the author of a medical text known as the Edwin Smith Papyrus, which predates Hippocrates by over 2,000 years. The Edwin Smith Papyrus was a revolutionary document. Modern doctors have said that it can still be regarded as the state-of-the-art reasoning for modern clinical practice. Simply put, Imhotep was a legitimate medical genius who used scientific reasoning to diagnose and treat his patients, which was a sharp divergence from what was common at the time. Keep in mind that at this point in history, science and magic were typically viewed as the same thing, which led to a lot of barbaric and ineffective treatments. But inside the Edwin Smith Papyrus, Imhotep wrote 48 different cases that he had worked on, and every single entry follows the same documentation style. Introductory heading, significant symptoms, diagnosis, and recommended treatment. This science-minded process was amazing for the time, but that doesn't mean that Imhotep's methods were perfect. In case the recommended treatments didn't work as intended, there were also eight magic spells inscribed on the papyrus. Some scholars believe that magic would be used after the physician had tried everything else. Although he was very scientifically minded, Imhotep was also incredibly religious. Some scholars believe he was a temple priest in his early life, and he later retained the title of High Priest under King Djoser. Because of Imhotep's religious authority, King Djoser decided that he would be the perfect man to build his tomb. Imhotep went to work immediately and eventually settled on a design that would change the course of history. Before Imhotep became an architect, Egyptian tombs were made out of dried mud. This limitation made the early tombs ugly, small, and structurally weak. Imhotep recognized all of the severe flaws that dried mud had as a building material and went to work finding a better solution. Eventually, Imhotep settled on using carved blocks of limestone to construct the pyramid. This material allowed him to create something that would have been impossible without his innovation. And when it was finished, Djoser's pyramid was the tallest structure in existence at the time. The pyramid itself was impressive enough, but Imhotep also created a giant complex that surrounded the tomb, which featured courtyards, apartments for priests, and more across an area of 40 acres. Plus, the entire area was surrounded by a massive 30 feet tall wall, which had 13 fake doors cut into it, with the true entrance being hidden. If that wasn't enough to deter intruders, the outer wall was also encircled by a massive trench that was nearly 150 feet wide. This wasn't just a temple and final resting place for the king. This was a statement about Egypt's advancement into a new era. A historian named Margaret Bunsen sums it up with, Imhotep built the complex as a mortuary shrine for Djoser, but it became a stage and an architectural model for the spiritual ideals of the Egyptian people. The Step Pyramid was not just a single pyramidal tomb, but a collection of temples, chapels, pavilions, corridors, storerooms, and halls. Fluted columns emerged from stone according to his plan, yet he made the walls of the complex conform to those of the palace of the king, according to ancient styles of architecture, thus preserving a link with the past. King Djoser loved the final structure so much that he decided to have Imhotep's name inscribed on the temple. This was a sign of the highest respect possible. Before this, only a king's name would be featured on monuments, but Djoser broke away from the established methods and ideals to celebrate Imhotep's genius. It would be impossible to overstate just how important Imhotep was. Without him, the Egyptians may have continued to build with dry mud for centuries or even longer. Egyptologist Miroslav Werner states that, 
Few monuments hold a place in human history as significant as that of the Steppe Pyramid in Saqqara. It can be said without exaggeration that his pyramid complex constitutes a milestone in the evolution of monumental stone architecture in Egypt and in the world as a whole. Here, limestone was first used on a large scale as a construction material, and here the idea of a monumental royal tomb in the form of a pyramid was first realized. In a 19th dynasty inscription found in South Saqqara, the ancient Egyptians were already describing Djoser as the opener of stone, which we can interpret as meaning the inventor of stone architecture. Djoser was mistakenly credited as the opener of stone. It was actually Imhotep who came up with the idea to use stone as a building material, and in doing so he changed the course of history. In fact, he's the very first architect that we know by name. While well, Imhotep's pyramid design was later overshadowed by larger monuments like the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx, he paved the way for those future projects. Without him, the Great Pyramids and every other massive Egyptian monument we know about would not exist. The Great Pyramid is much more famous than the one Imhotep made for King Djoser. But what's interesting is that no one knows who designed it. Modern scholars have different theories and ideas, but there isn't a concrete answer. It's likely that it was a team of architects who completed the job, because if one man were responsible, then we would likely know his name. And that's what sets Imhotep apart from the rest. He single-handedly designed Djoser's pyramid and developed a new method of construction to make it possible. It's also believed that he designed and partially completed two more pyramids after Djoser's death, although it hasn't been confirmed yet. Some archaeologists believe Imhotep designed a pyramid for the ruler who came after Djoser, Sekhmeket. Sekhmeket's pyramid was never finished because he died very quickly after becoming ruler. What little bits were finished before his death do look like the work of Imhotep, but unfortunately there is no documentation to prove it. After Sekhmeket died, a new ruler named Kaaba took control of Egypt and allegedly hired Imhotep to build him a pyramid. This is now known as the Layer Pyramid. But like Sekhmeket's pyramid, this one was never completed. There are theories that Imhotep also worked with the next king Huni, but almost nothing is known about Huni or his time as ruler. And as of right now, there are no pyramids that have been credited to him. So we know that Imhotep was an amazing physician and architect, but his skills didn't end there. He was also known as an incredibly wise philosopher and author. After he died, he was officially inducted into a group known as the Seven Great Sages of Egypt. These great thinkers are credited with ancient Egypt's advanced philosophies, mathematics, and more. Imhotep died around 2648 BC, and within 100 years he had already been deified. The ancient Egyptians claim that he was related to a god named Ta, and that his mother was the daughter of a god named Banabjet. In reality, Imhotep was simply a genius whose work was so impressive that people thought a mere human could never accomplish at all. And who could blame them? Imhotep's life story sounds too unbelievable to even be a movie, and the Egyptians didn't have other geniuses to compare him to, so they thought he was given powers from the gods in order to push Egyptian society further and further. And speaking of movies, Imhotep has been featured in several popular films, although none of the details are close to being accurate. His first appearance is in a 1932 horror movie called The Mummy. Then he later appeared as the monstrous antagonist in Brendan Fraser's movie of the same name in 1999. Okay guys, that's the crazy story of the first pyramid builder Imhotep. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our new content. And drop a comment below to let us know what topic you want us to tackle next. Thanks so much for watching, catch you next time.